winter of 1925 in the small, quiet little town of saint michel des saint an assassination took place that shook the region, but is largely forgotten almost 100 years later. This is a classic story of greed, corruption, low-speed car chases, high court drama, and above all, murder. The St. Maurice Paper Company, headquartered in New York, was a profitable business that employed over 800 lumberjacks. They cut down trees in saint Zanon and saint michel des saint and they floated the logs down the Matawin and St. Maurice rivers until they reached the paper mill in trois rivières But in 1925, the St. Maurice Paper Company began to notice a problem that was costing them hundreds of thousands of dollars. There were rumors of company-wide corruption. It was even whispered that some of the employees were stealing the logs from the rivers. It was estimated that over 40% of the logs never even made it to the mill in trois rivières Quickly, the rumors became so pervasive and the evidence was so alarming that the St. Maurice Paper Company was forced to act. They promoted one of their employees, James Robert Stewart Tyhurst, as a superintendent and they charged him with the goal of ending the corruption in its tracks. Tyhurst started his new position in the spring of 1925. James Robert Stewart Tyhurst was a decorated captain in the British military. At just 36 years of age, he was already regarded as a World War I hero, having received the War Cross for his victories in France and Russia. When the war ended in 1918, he relocated to Montreal and he was immediately snatched up by the St. Maurice Paper Company. Although stoic in his manner, he worked well with other employees and he showed tremendous loyalty to the company. His future looked bright. He was married and he lived with his wife and child in Trois-Rivières. He often traveled to saint michel des saint to oversee the operations and to manage the plan he had put in place to deal with the corruption, which he executed with military precision and a stoic sense of style. Tyhurst's first phase was to examine the employee roster and immediately fire anyone who was undesirable, although historical records are not clear on what undesirable really meant. He then examined the river along which the logs were traveling and he put guards at strategic points along the river. He hired these guards from the Pinkerton National Detective Agency, an independent American police force which was founded by Alan Pinkerton. The Pinkerton Company is still active today, 171 years after it was founded. Although these decisions made him unpopular in the area, garnering him more than a few enemies, the strategy seemed to work. In just three months, the St. Maurice Paper Company saw a new profit of over $200,000, which by today's standards is more like $3 million. It was a gray, gloomy December 4th in 1925. There were only two roads in and out of St. Michel, and the roads were muddy and slick. Not many people dared to take their vehicles out in such dangerous conditions. Tyhurst was working in his company-rented home in St. Michel, and by his side were his colleagues, Armand Boudreau, the accountant, and Louis Charon, the assistant foreman. At 7.45, Boudreau left the house to go meet with the cook to remind him to have breakfast ready for Tyhurst the next day at 8 a.m. because Tyhurst was preparing to return to Trois-Rivières to be with his wife and child. Charon and Tyhurst decided to end the day by chatting and smoking their pipes, and then Charon went home. At 9.45, when Charon left the house, he happened to notice that in the alleyway there was a car that was parked there, but he thought nothing of it, and he returned home. At 10.50 p.m., as Tyhurst was examining several papers on his desk on the first floor, multiple shots rang out. Both panes of glass shattered and tires exclaimed, oh my God, as he clutched his chest and he slumped behind his desk. As Charon lived nearby, he jumped to his feet immediately as he heard the shots and he ran to the house. He called out for Tyhurst several times, but as he entered the office, he was shocked to see Tyhurst lying dead on the floor with blood pouring out of his skull. Boudreau entered soon after and as Charon ran for help, Boudreau called for the doctor. Dr. Conrad Charpentier confirmed Tyhurst's death 
and he immediately tried to call the coroner in Joliet, only to realize that the phone lines had been severed. Dr. Charpentier then found two men to stand guard at the door to prevent the crime scene from being disturbed. So be sure to join me, John David Hickey, as we move into part two of our story and go for a drive along the muddy roads of La Nozière in pursuit of the murderers of James Robert Stuart Tyhurst. Thank you.